the meeting to order of the Zoning Board of Appeals for November 12th. Can we do a roll call, please? Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Marceso? Here. Mr. Stanhope? Here. Mr. Richard? Here. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Stark? Mr. Loisel? Well, we are missing some members this evening. The alternate members will be voting. Okay. Please join me in Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Crockett. Yes. Where there is no, the, the uh, co-chairmen are not here tonight. The first order of business would be to elect a chairman for the evening amongst the members that are present. So someone needs to nominate uh, an, individu an individual and then vote for him. I nominate Mr. Crockett. I second it. All in favor? Yeah. If anyone's here for Appeal 2537 tonight, which is the last appeal on your agenda, that has been tabled. So we will not be hearing that appeal this evening. Can I have the approval of the minutes, please? Excuse me, that's 19 Vesper Street. I'm sorry. Yes, 19 Vesper Street. I move to approve the minutes of the last meeting. And we are approving minutes for August and September this evening. I move to approve both meetings. Second. All those in <coughs> favor? It's unanimous. We have appeal number 2535, special exception appeal by Warren and Denise Hamilton, 167 Two Rod Road, Assessor's Map R32, Parcel 19, for home occupation. Who do we have? Please take the podium and introduce your name and address for us. Denise Hamilton, 167 Two Rod Road, Scarborough. Warren Hamilton, 167 Two Rod Road, Scarborough. Thank you. And please state what you're here for this evening. We're here to um, request a special exception for in-home occupation of a sign business, creating um, motor vehicle decals, signs, banners. Okay, great. And we have your paperwork here. Do we need to go over the normal pr appeal procedures? Yes. I got a question. Yes. So those are the only three things you're going to do. You're not going to put signs up for businesses, uh, mm. like the Seco signs or Burr and those. Are you going to do that? Or no, we're just going to do those anything. three things. We'll be we'll be doing, okay. like you said, banners, signs. Vehicle graphics, okay. and any installation would be contracted by someone else. We would contract that out. With Thank you. We have two sets of standards that we need to look at for you this evening. We have the standards for special exception and the standards for home occupation. So we'll have two sets of guidelines. What I'd like to do is just read off, and you can just read your answers. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or un unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage dis disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. And if you could just read the answers that you have on your sheet that you sent in. Okay. And our apologies if they were vague. I mean, we just didn't That's know fine. how to fill them out. We'll have um, questions. But there will be no unsanitary or unhealthful conditions created by having our sign shop in the area. Okay. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. There will be no added traffic or pedestrian traffic than there already is on the road. Thank you. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. There will be no safety problems created or the need for added municipal fire and police protection. Thank you. 
The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have adverse effect on water supplies. No water is needed and therefore will have no adverse effect on water supplies or any sedimentation or erosion issues. Thank you. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Sign shop will be a nice added value to the other businesses in the area. Thank you. And is your property located in a shoreland zone? No. Okay. If it was located in a shoreland zone as depicted on the town, Scarborough's official shoreland zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all the requirements of the town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinances. And you've already stated that it's not. And you have sufficient applicant title, right, and interest in the site of the proposed use to carry out the proposed use? We own the existing land and home. Okay. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to the subsection sub 5 of this section. Yes. Okay, great. Got one more. There. One more. <laughs> oh, did I miss one? Yes. Aye. Yes. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. There should be no added noise no matter what time of the day it is. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Longstaff? Mr. Chairman, just for clarification, what would the hours of operation be for your business? Eight to five, probably. Okay, we would want to have something specific. So if you can give us what you feel would be a Eight to five, five days a week, okay. Monday through Friday. Right. And any comments from you or? I received no comments, no written comments on this uh, appeal. Okay, and any staff comments? Or? Okay. Well, the only staff comment I have is that we now need to turn to the performance standards for home occupations under Section 9V in the ordinance. Thank you. There are 12 different criteria that we've got to make sure that this complies with. Okay. And the, does the applicant have the I system? forwarded this section to the applicant. I believe they're prepared to, okay. to answer your questions on these. It's we just don't have their answers. They're not so. part of the application. Okay. Thank you. We have some more questions for you. Sure. <laughs> the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building net accessory thereto. Yes. It'll be um, in our <coughs> breezeway, and okay. there's an unfinished basement below the breezeway. Okay. And the That's breezeway is all the usage you need for this business? Yes. A home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Yes. Okay. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. There'll Correct. be no others. Well, it'll be us. <laughs> okay. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under Section 12, Sign Regulations, Subsection E. You know that you ha you can't have a sign; it just has to comply within the town's Correct. ordinances and guidelines. You, you just can't make it yourself, though. Right? Yeah, we'll I'll have just to find someone to make it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that must be a new one because I didn't hear that one. <laughs> there shall probably be le less cost for you, though. <laughs> there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building except ex expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibitation shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. So you're not doing lobster traps. No. You don't need to worry about that. No nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odor, heat, or glare. No. None of it. The traffic generated by such home occupations shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. No. None whatsoever. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and, during, and the vehicles of maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak, peak hours of operation. We have ample parking. It's just the two of you, right? Yeah. The home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that for the purpose of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Now, you said you have some space in the basement, mm -hmm. and that's not 
to be included per this specific It's not finished space? Correct. Right. You'd be utilizing that just for storage and things like that? Correct. Yeah. And what percentage of the home is the breezeway within that 20%? Oh, yes. It's what, maybe 10? 10 to 15 at the very most. Yeah. Okay. Probably about Probably 115. Yeah. That, we'll check that on the building permit application for the home occupation when we do that CO inspection. Okay. And you address the unfinished attic or basement spaces. Space within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. Theirs is in their house, correct? It's correct. Not an accessory There's no building. accessory building. Okay. Home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. Are you doing any? I, I would assume that this is considered a retail sale. Correct. You're not going to be just doing wholesale signage? Correct. The total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within the building, which it sounds like it will be. Correct. It's not an open breezeway. It's no. It would be hard to do that in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> the sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises, seafood caught or harvested off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling unit or by one employee permitted under paragraph 3 above. That's confusing. <laughs> confusing, yes, it is. The sale of the products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises. Yes. yes. Okay. You're making all the signs <coughs> on, yes. on premises. You're not buying signs elsewhere. Correct. To bring them no, we're bring making them. 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 So the, uh, Mr. Chairman, the last two criteria, there's no point in going okay. to that. <laughs> more of more fishermen, lobstermen, and motor vehicle repairs. No. So no. Okay. I don't think that pertains to what we're doing. All right. With that being said, you want to uh, open it up for public hearing? That's what I was looking for. <laughs> I'd like to open it up for public hearing at this time. Anyone that would like to speak on this appeal? Seeing no one present, I'd like to close the public hearing. I'd like to open it up to questions of the board. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? So it's it's retail, so people will be coming there to buy product. They sure. Oops, sorry. Sorry. The majority of our stuff that we make is shipped by UPS to customers, and um, the ma half of my time probably is spent doing design work at the computer for our shop in North Carolina. So it would be very... So will you, will you be bringing the signs to the UPS dis Correct. distribution? Yes. A UPS truck won't be coming to your place? <coughs> no. And then... Uh, he said the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood. And you answered the sign shop will be nice, a nice added value to the other businesses in the area. Mm -hmm. We're what a few other? houses down from Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. It was one of our customers. Which is one of our past. customers from the past when we used to live here. And, um, and also with... Um, race car builder, two houses down that builds yeah. race cars that we supply graphics for. Uh, that's what you mean by other businesses in the area? Correct. If I remember the area accurately, there's probably about five or so businesses probably right within that vicinity that are probably home businesses. So right. There's it's, a, it's, um, it's a transitional area that uh, we're trying to transition to light industrial. However, because it's an overlay for RF, they can continue to have it as a residence as long as they maintain that residence. If they wish to ever convert to solely business, they can do so by letter to, to the uh, Planning and Coast Department. Uh, and then at that point, the residential use would cease. That, that's not what they're doing, but that's why there are some other businesses in the area, and that's kind of the use that seems to be um, growing in that section of town. Any other questions, Mr. Mrs. <laughs> So there won't be any ladders or trucks or all that. Everything's going to be yeah. inside and inside. decals and that. That everything would be inside. Good. Um, one thing I did want to do, which you've already addressed, is the hours of operation. Thank you for that. Now you said that the design work is going to be done in North Carolina. And no, I do the design work here for our shop in North Carolina. Okay, so you have another shop. Mm -hmm. Yes. Down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to be making the stuff and sending no, it No, no, they, they make stuff down there for our customers down there, and we, I just do the design work at the computer and email it to, to them. Okay. On occasion of traffic, I mean, it's kind of a busy area over there anyway. Mm -hmm. um, what do you foresee for people that would actually come to the house if Rarely. you ever had it? 
maybe one or two, two cars. A week maybe at the most. <laughs> I mean, you know. It, there it, would be less traffic if I was driving to work every day to a, a job, you know. That okay. Would, that would create more traffic, honestly. All right. Are there any other questions? Do we have any letters or anything from the community on this? No. Close the questions for the board. Entertain a motion at this point. Okay. Anybody would like to make a motion? I can make a motion to approve these folks for their in-home business. Second? I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I did fail to mention before the meeting, I apologize for that, where there is four members, if it's 2-2 two, two split and it's a tie, if anybody does not want to hear, have your appeal here tonight, that would consider as denied if we had a 2-2 two, two split, correct? A tie equals a fail, yeah. Okay. Just wanted to point that out for members. Sorry, I <laughs> should point that out for, beforehand for you. You folks are all set? Thank you very much. Thank you. We had to make that's this what point, we yeah. were doing. Your name. Yes. That's what we were paying the about now. We didn't have those men. <laughs> I was going to say, it looks different. Yeah, that's fine. Thank Yeah, hold on to your appeal for the one that was tabled this evening. Hold that in your packet. I can pass it, Dan. You don't have to. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, you can. But if you get out of your seat, we can't talk. <laughs> Thank you. Good. All right. Appeal number 2415, an extension by Donald and Susan Hamill, or Hamill, I'm sorry, 3 Bay Street, Assessor's Map U23, Parcel 59, requesting a one-time six-month extension of the practical difficulty variance they received from the Zoning Board of Appeals on May 28, 2014. Mr. Fisher, how are you? That pretty much sums it up. Please uh, state uh, your name. And Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions here this evening representing <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. Hamill for that very request. Um, for those of you who were on the board at that point, uh, this was back in May of this, May 28th of this past year, we received unanimous approval for a practical difficulty variance for uh, uh, the Hamels to be able to rebuild a home that they have at 3 Bay Street. Uh, there were no particular issues, and we did receive a 5-0 to zero vote. Uh, unfortunately, what happened, and this is not unusual in the, the beach areas where uh, the town requests that there be no major construction, demolition or construction from uh, Memorial Day through Labor Day and in some cases well into the middle of September. And then obviously given the winter months, it gets a little challenging to build some uh, houses, although not impossible during that period. The point was that they, the Hamels had contracted with their GC to begin work ostensibly in October this past month. And uh, about a month ago, they received note, uh, notice from their GC that uh, he was not, well, for whatever reason, they weren't going to be able to start until either December or even early January. That would put us past the six-month period of the of validity of the variance. Um, town regulations does allow for a one-time extension for up to six months. The Hamels are prepared to go forward with it. They don't really have much of a choice um, when their GC said that they have to delay a little bit. So um, hopefully that's going to be starting with the building permit uh, either next month or in January. Nevertheless, we do need to uh, get the approved extension if we can. Uh, it's only a one-time extension. They understand that. Uh, so toward that end, they will end up building here coming up within the next couple of months and certainly uh, hopefully finish by the time the, uh, the year rolls around. So we're just asking for a simple extension. I, I guess my only thing is I don't know if we need to, where half of the members probably didn't vote, if you could just give kind of a brief synopsis. Sure. I know you you probably don't have your whole plan here and everything. That I, I usually come uh, prepared with, with uh, a brand new project, but um, in this case, essentially what it is, it's a single uh, family residential cottage that was built in the 1920s. Uh, the cottage was built uh, as a seasonal entity. The foundation was not particularly good. It was just kind of a cinder block and stone foundation. 
Uh, there's some deterioration in the cottage. The Hamels have owned it for quite a while, uh, have used it as a summer rental or as a summer, um, um, well, partial rental, but they also live there a portion of the time. They're now just coincidentally actually looking to move into this as their permanent residence. This is on Bay Street down off of East Grand, uh, down off of Pine Point. And uh, the house that they're proposing to build is actually slightly smaller than the existing one, and it makes the nonconformity of the lots or of the lot in which the house is located less uh, nonconforming than it is right now. Uh, the lot is so small that the, they barely have a building envelope, and the house, it's portion of the house is in that envelope. A portion of it is outside. We're actually moving it further away from one of the sides and further back from the road to make it less nonconforming all the way around. The other side and the rear were not an issue anyway. Uh, the board heard that argument and uh, agreed that there was no issue as far as that's concerned, and it was a, a unanimous a five to zero vote to approve the practical difficulty variance. And again, here this evening, we're just asking for an ex the one time allowed extension for that so that they can build and do whatever they need to all the way up through this coming May. Okay. Mr. Longstaff, are there any comments from your staff or you? Uh, no, I uh, only did remind the board that, the, as Mr. Fisher has stated, Section 4K of the ordinance authorizes the board to approve uh, a one-time six-month extension on any pro approval or permit issued um, by them. So it is it is something that you can do um, for good cause shown. Okay. In Section K, provisions of expiration, all permits and approval issued pursuant to this ordinance shall expire if the construction of the building or structure or commencement of use has not begun within six months of the date of which the permit or approval was issued. Upon good cause, the person or board issuing the original permit or approval may extend it to its effectiveness for an additional six months. That's what Mr. Longstaff was referring to. Do we need to open it up for public hearing uh, where this has already been I approved? Think, I think uh, any questions from the board at this time? Okay. And if none, then I would entertain, oh, open it up for any comment from the public. Do we need, I, I didn't know if that Yeah, works. I think you can. If okay. there's anyone here that has any comment, I think you could, yeah. Okay, because I know we're really not voting on it. So. I'd like to open it up to a public hearing if anybody would like to speak on this matter. Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. I'd like to open it up for comments from the board or a motion to extend. I think it's pretty cut and dry. And we have the ability to give them six months, so I make a motion that we approve it. Don't mind me asking, just per question of that, what was the major thing that pushed it back? Just It pushed it back? Oh, you mean because they couldn't right. meet the deadline? Uh, they had contracted with a general contractor who had expected to start work typically in October, which was fine, and uh, they received word right at the end of September from the general contractor that he still was able to do the house, but he wasn't able to get his crews together until sometime in early December. That's not normally an issue, except that November 28th is the deadline by which something has to be done there, and that would have pushed us outside of the realm of... Okay. Uh, applicability, so we're here Great. a month earlier just to ask for that. Thank you. Mr. Mississa, you have a motion. Is there a second? I'd like to second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thanks for your time. All set. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Moving on to Appeal 2536, a special exception appeal by the South Coast Community Church, 368 Gorham Road, Assessor's Map R19, Parcel 21, modification to previous appeal. And I'd just like to note, I don't go there as a member, but my daughter does practice there for her cheering, so that, but that doesn't affect me in any way for making a decision. Like to go over the standards for a special exception? Um, no. oh. State his name. I'm please. sorry. Excuse me. Would you please state your name? And my name's uh, Peter Beagle. I'm with Land Design Solutions, and I'm here representing South Coast Community Church tonight. Thank you. Now we can go over the standards for special exception. <laughs> sorry, sir. And do you have your responses right with you? Yes, I do. Okay. I think first maybe what, what, what are they doing? The project. Yes. Yes. Explain your project and what you're doing for the board, please. Uh, the, uh, the the church is a, a special exception in the RF zone, and they are proposing. So every time something they want to change something, they need to uh, come back to you folks. Uh, they would like. They currently have a parcel of 16.4 acres 
and they would like to sell a portion of that, bringing the size of the, the church and their parcel to five acres. Um, that five acres uh, encompasses all their parking, their stormwater buffer. Uh, nothing will be, uh, they will not be creating uh, nonconformity in any way. Um, it's simply getting rid of um, a portion of their uh, their property that right now uh, is uh, is just church retained land. When they the last time they were here in 2006, when they were here for a subdivision, they developed the subdivision and they retained a certain amount of land, thinking they might have a conference center. Uh, there might be th there was a list of things that potentially they were thinking. Uh, their current thought is that uh, financially it would uh, benefit them to uh, to sell that property and just keep the church uh, where it is. They don't see that they would expand the church given the geometry and the configuration of the existing church, that the expansion just would not uh, uh, work for them. So they would like to divest themselves of the property for uh, financial reasons and retain the uh, five acres that encompasses uh, everything that you, if you went to church there, everything that you would see. Now, do we need any more information from the applicant about the intent of the sale or anything, or do we not even need to get no. into that? All you're, all you're trying to decide as a board is um, the change that he's just described. Is that in any way, uh, is that in any way in conflict of the criteria that you look at for granting a special exception? Almost like you're hearing this for the first time, but you don't have to review all of the, the details of the subdivision because that's not yours to decide on. That's a planning board uh, review that they'll be going for once they get, if they get approval from the zoning board. Okay. So, so your job is to, to look at those special exception. Uh, it's not a special, yes, it is a special exception. And just to clarify, it's not the church actually that it's the daycare. It's the daycare, the nursery school that is an adjunct use to the church. The church is actually, or a place of worship, is actually a permitted use in the rural farm district. But the adjunct use, being the nursery school, is the one that triggers the special exception. And so that's that's why they're here because they do intend to continue the nursery school. Yes. Oh. Oh, that hasn't been in existence for years. <coughs> So, so the nursery school is no longer a use of the facility? No, sir. No, it's just mainly cheerleading practice. Oh. <coughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's an adjunct use or not. Um, so is there any plan to reestablish a nursery school in the future? You should come up and state it. Okay. Well, you do have the rooms available for it, but you're just not, don't have any, could you just come up to the podium oh, yeah. and Sorry. state your name and yeah. where you're from, please? Sorry. Thank you. Travis Bush, pastor, South Coast Community Church. Okay. Because I know, I know the facility, so there are yeah. rooms and everything available to do it, but you just have no plans to do it. Correct. We've, we've gone back and forth on that. My wife actually entertained the idea three years ago, um, and then again two years ago. And at this time, just like with expanding the church in the foreseeable future, we have no plans to continue that um, uh, at all, so yeah. Does that change the appeal at all? <laughs> well, if that had made clear earlier on, we wouldn't have had to be here tonight for this. Well, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. Um, yeah, it, it, it was not made known that the nursery school wasn't operating. Yeah, I, sorry, I we yeah had no information on that. So keep keep in mind if you do say that the nursing nursery school is not going to operate and it is not operating, you would not be able to do it unless you came back before us and had a brand you, you new appeal. You would simply have to come back for that special exception, should you ever... If you ever wanted to. We just want to make sure you know that it's on the I mean, table. Since we're here, we could go ahead and pursue that, I guess, and that way it's on the table. For if nothing future. else changes, you at least have that... Correct. Yeah. You have I, that approval on file. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. We can so since you're here, you might. Yeah, and he's great. He's, he's good, so we'll just continue. That. We could limit that. If we if we decided that you weren't going to do it and we canceled this, you could not have a nursery school going forward at all And right. if you wanted to. It's just it's yeah. keeping that option open to you. Uh, well, with that. To, be clear, to be clear, I just want to clarify. The way you just said that, you can always come back for a right. special right. exception to operate a nursery school. I don't want to bug you guys. It has to come back before us. You have to come back right. to do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
I don't want to bug you guys any more than we have to, so we'll, we'll continue and <laughs> okay. just see worst, what happens. The worst thing that can happen is the board denies your special exception for the nursery school, which you're not running anyway. Right. And we can That's still the go worst thing that can happen. Approval. Your church can still go forward. So. Very yeah. good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so so you're just said. reviewing the special exception criteria? Based uh, upon the nurseries. Based cool. upon the nurseries. Because if, if we weren't re reviewing that, we wouldn't even have to be here. Exactly. Okay. Right. Everybody clear? No. <laughs> Why did the planning board send this down to us? The planning board didn't send it to us. Well, before they could approve it, they had to come to the zoning They board. have to get approval for the use, the right. adjunct use. Adjunct use is... If they were the operating a nursery school, they would have to come for permission to have that special exception adjunct use approved by the zoning board before then they could continue to go through their approval with the with the uh, planning board on the subdivision a place of worship is permitted it's because they have that other even though they're not using it it was originally listed that they had that when the appeal was approved originally so we're going to approve something that they're not using well again we're stay with me on this <laughs> <laughs> they're here they're not currently operating a nursery school, and they've not operated, we're just learning tonight, they've not, not operated a nursery school for a few years. However, by continuing with this special exception appeal, should it be approved, it leaves the option open for them to operate a nursery school in the future as long as nothing else changes within the site, like they peel off another acre of the site for some other use, or they discontinue the church and decide to just operate a nursery school or something of that nature. Well, how so long as long as nothing changes, that use will run with the land. How long does a CEO stay in, in place if something's not being used? I thought it was one year. No, as long as the, the, the approval runs with the land, okay? The, the, the owner. It, it, it stays so in place as long as nothing changes. Well, operation and non-operation is quite a bit of change, isn't it? If, if, I, if, if you have a store or there's a business no, and it's shut there's, for a year, there's nothing that CEO. says they can't stop operating that and restart it because it's a special exception. It's not a non conforming use. You're thinking of a non conforming use, which, if ceases for more than one year, it cannot be resumed. Okay, so non conforming is that this one This is not non conforming. This is a special exception permitted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. They could have stopped this use, and if they'd have kept the same amount of land and hadn't gone through the subdivision process or started through the subdivision process, we wouldn't be hearing this tonight. But I, I, I think where the applicant said just to go ahead with it, if we don't go ahead with it the way it is, they would have to come back before us as a new appeal if they ch decided to start the nursing okay, let's school go again. Yep. Move forward. Okay. As confusing as it is. It is confusing. <laughs> I just don't want to limit them. They're already here, and it's already approved on record. So, Did you have a question? I was thinking, it's, you, you, we're all clear on that, because I heard something different on the podium that you may just not want to push that aside and, and, and not be heard on the, on the nursery school. Is that true, or no, you do want no, to? No, I, I, so I think... Uh, Right. I think we would like to move forward um, and, just, and just keep things going as they are. I, I think the, uh, the miscommunication, if you will, since we'd always been a, a special exception, nobody was really separating those uses, and it was just, okay, uh, you want to, uh, you're going to the planning board. Well, since you've been a special exception, you need to go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals and get that taken care of uh, before you move on. And we never really got down into, okay, exactly why was that a special exception? Um, and, and what were those uses? It was just we had been in the last few times they'd okay. been here. They were a special exception. So, okay, this is what you've got to do. Go through steps A, B, and C. So, um, just yeah, here we here we open. are. Uh, right. So this would keep the options open. Should okay. I'd like to go through the standards for special exception. Yes. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthy conditions by reason of sewerage, disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its de design or operation. Uh, we will have no uh, additional impacts. 
The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. The church's traffic uh, will not change. Okay. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Correct. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Uh, that is correct. No change. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity of other structures, and density of development. Uh, correct. There are no changes to the site or structures. And it's not located in the shoreland zone? Correct. Okay. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use? Uh, yes, we supplied a uh, deed of ownership. The applicant has sufficient, uh, has technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section? Correct. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Uh, again, there will be uh, no changes. What are the hours of operation generally? You're generally there till five aside from events and things. Uh. Correct. <laughs> generally. Yes. I think the latest it's ever open is probably for the chairing, which I think ends at like 7 or 8. Yeah, and we occasionally have a deacon meeting one Wednesday night a month that will go till 8.30, 9 o'clock, 1 a.m., uh, whenever. Um, no, just just kidding. We've limited it to two hours now. Um, <laughs> but uh, And then Sunday mornings, obviously, from uh, first people start arriving 8.30, and then we're out of there by noon. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may, if we could kind of approach this from, again, the place of worship is a permitted use. Right. And really the responses have been all about the church, but what we're really hearing is the non-operating <laughs> nursery Correct. school. When the nursery school was operating, was it a five-day-a-week um, school? Or if you ever did operate it again. If you were going to operate it again. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was eight years ago the last time that operated. Um, Yes, it was it was like 8 a.m. to 3, okay. um, and Monday through Friday. Rough, does anyone remember roughly how many, what the capacity of this? The I believe year? it was limited to 20. Yeah. Okay. 20, 20 children. So that's kind of, just. I just want the board to be aware of the scope of, of what the adjunct use was. Um, you know, it's, it wasn't 200 students mm -hmm. or 200 yeah, 20. Kids. It was limited to so, 20. You know, it's a big difference between that capacity, and I believe there are other limitations that are placed on nursery <coughs> schools anyway by the state and so on and so forth. Right. And just to cover other things for the church, they're not excluded from having other groups or anything there. Today. No, as long as it's a, it's a church function or a, you know a community function. Then. Community event. Yeah. I just want to make sure I cover all the bases for you. <laughs> so when, when you say church in here, we can strike church out and say daycare. It really should be, yeah. If we if we can substitute church, <laughs> so the daycare operation is it's going to remain nursery, nurse, It's nursery school. That was yes. Has nothing. <laughs> right. No, you got me all from this stuff, no. <laughs> and it, all the answers you answered would be the same if the nursery school was operating. Okay. And we just want to we want to go on record as making sure we've made that distinction. That's. It's a fine point, but yes. nonetheless, it has to be clarified. That's what we're here for, for that. <laughs> so we might as well make sure. Okay. I'd like to open it up for public hearing. If anybody wishes to speak on the matter. A lot of people here, but no one wants to speak. Okay. You just take the podium and do your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Maura Collins. I live at 7 Tamarack Lane, which is lot 4 of this subdivision, church owned, <coughs> not owned property. Um, so I guess I'm just confused why I'm here. Because <laughs> I felt that the reason why we're coming to the zoning um, committee meeting um, was also to discuss the property that they want to sell, which will affect us. No, that's so planning that's board. So that's just planning board. That's a planning right. board. Okay. It, we're not here to hear the, we're not, we're not taking um, the subdivision um, as an appeal that's not just to maintain the existing piece. Right. Of property, right. Which we like. Again, 
it, it's, a, it's a point of clarification and a minor one. The only change is I understand it, and correct me if I'm misstating it, but based on the application in front of us, the only change is that they had a parcel this big with the church and the nursery school on it, and now they have a parcel that's this big with the church and the nursery school on it. It still contains all of their parking, all of their infrastructure. It was just this spare land, for lack of a better term, that they're now dividing into additional house lots. And the planning board would have to approve any The planning board would go through the subdivision review process, would require any, they'd review it, make sure it met their requirements, and, and they would put any conditions on that subdivision that they felt were necessary, such as stormwater, you know, uh, mm -hmm. stormwater infrastructure, um, uh, additional turnouts, fire suppression, any, any of those elements that they look at, uh, lot size, mm -hmm. lot configuration, those, those issues, buffering, that would all be planning board. Um, we're only here tonight to determine is that change, reducing that parcel from 16 acres to five acres, does, is that in any way affect or impact the special exception adjunct use of a nursery school? Which used, which to, be <laughs> there. used to be there. So you, which, can, you can definitely come which before can the be there again. Here on the 17th, correct. Yeah. Yeah, you have the right to voice your opinion at that, but okay. really we don't even really need to be here, but we're just doing the formality. We get the letter, so we're doing our formalities as well. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you for you. coming. <laughs> Does anybody else wish to speak in public hearing? Seeing that there's none, I'd like to close the public hearing. Open it up for questions from the board or a motion. Yes. Where is this non-existing daycare located on the map here? Uh, in the church <coughs> building. It's in the church building? Yes. Yeah, it's part of it. Mr. Mr. So I'm familiar with the building. They they have rooms that they would have had like little that would have been classrooms down a hall corridor. So as as most of your churches do these days. Any other questions? Is there a motion? I think it's been all the criteria, thank you. I make a motion to approve. Second. With the exception of the daycare, if it was to restart, we're approving it based upon that, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Do you have all this? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Is second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Three to one, passes. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. Sorry. And, and only because I'm pretty confused by the whole thing. <laughs> I don't think you're the only one, Mr. Mr. <laughs> Thank you. We, we, I will say I really appreciate you doing what you do for the cheerleading squad. It's the only place we have to practice in town, so we deeply appreciate your support. We enjoy being a part of the community. Thank you. And they, they did go to the planning board. They were asked all those questions. So they got to still go to the planning board for this whole right. Oh, we didn't do that. That's the second one we didn't do because we didn't have to vote on it. I'm sorry. Dan, can you put him down? 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 Can you there we go. Correct. That's no longer. <laughs> do. That's not true. We do. Are we missing one here that we didn't sign? No, you didn't have to sign the second one. The uh, second one we didn't have that's to approve. It's going to be recorded in the minutes. Folks, we're still in session. It's going to be recorded in the right. minutes. Thank you. That's okay. I have my mom here. Go to Laura. She's <laughs> Oh, is that right? Seven minutes. Oh, okay. But anyways. Mr. Longstaff, do you have any other questions or information for us? Uh, no. Did I did I remember to forward to you folks there's some training opportunities through the Maine Municipal Association? I think I the gap, emailed. Yeah, the gap. I just wanted to make sure that everyone got that and was aware of that. If they were interested, um, we can help you get there and back with mileage and whatnot. Did everybody get that? I remember seeing it. Mm -hmm. so. I'll relook at that. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Okay. I'd like to warm. Uh, express my uh, gratitude by the uh, emails, clarification, not clarification, but guidance that you give us 
to, to go a little bit further, knowing that I'm not a prof in the zoning business professionally, but a layman, so to speak, it helps me kind of ask crazy questions. Oh, well, you're welcome, and it's not easy. It's not something that comes naturally to any of us, and, and the only reason I can help you is because I deal with it all day long, right. every right. day. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be just as confused and still am sometimes. But, and, and I noticed that, well, that the one that wanted to have the home uh, office, you asked to have the, the plot drawings and all that, and I, I didn't see anything, so... It's in the building permit application. Because that kind of helps me to kind of see yeah. where it is type of thing. The, the tricky part about the home occupation is that you, as a special exception, you're reviewing the special exception criteria, mm -hmm. but the performance standards are really things that they have to do um, in order to stay in the good graces of the ordinance. So if somebody steps out of bounds and all of a sudden their home occupation takes over their entire structure and we find out about it, we can go back to the performance standards and say you're not you're not. So you see those. that it's taken you see that twenty percent of yeah, that before it comes to us? Exactly. Right. It it's a little disjointed because there are specific uh, performance standards that pertain to home occupations as well as a few, several other uses in the performance section. They may fall under special exception or not. This one's kind of a hybrid because it has those four or five general criteria that you look at, plus a whole bunch of other performance standards that aren't necessarily yours to regulate, they're mine to regulate, but I feel like it's a good question and answer session for you to go down through those and it gives the applicant a chance to explain mm -hmm. what their project is a little a little bit more, especially when the information they've provided is a little bit thin. Mm -hmm. I mean they, they, they filled out the application and they had answered the questions, but it was a little thin, um, so it gave it gave you a chance to get a little bit under, better understanding of what it was they were proposing to do. And, and what, why does something so simple as a six month extension have to come to us? It's a great point, and I would love to see somebody propose an amendment to. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm thinking looking at this. I call it the beach, the Pine Point and like Pagan's Beach, 15 foot setback. We always approve it because we're going to tear it down and make it something better. That the ordinance is supposed to pick that up. So it doesn't come on our right table. The uh, six-month extension is is something that I, I feel like when you guys make uh, a decision, when, when you decide on something and you approve it, it sh that approval should be good for I think a minimum of a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think six months. Especially is especially in Maine with, with the weather. Well, for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that probably well over 50% of the appeals that you have before you come from the beach communities. Two of the beach communities sort of have prohibitions on summer construction. Uh, they're not ours to, they're not prohibitions that we enforce, but their, their association yeah. rules don't let them do it. So if they don't meet that window, they've missed a whole six months of construction mm. season, and, and you're only approving the thing for six months. It makes no sense to me. So I, I really think that so do we an make amendment. A motion? Can I make a motion? Or well, I, I think what we, do we do? What do I think we, do? we when we go through these these changes to um, the beach communities, we should also look. We've got a whole list of of uh, ordinance amendments that we're, we're we working put that on. on it? I think it's already there actually. Good. Thank you. And I'll make sure that I, I reiterate that to <laughs> the town planner when we go through yeah, that. Yeah, because it. it, it to me, a, a minimum, and I mean, if you guys think it should be longer, say so, but I think a minimum of a year on your decision is reasonable. I, I, I don't think it good. should well, be. I think that's very reasonable. You know, I don't think five years is reasonable either, but I think a year is reasonable. And then, yeah, if there's an extension to be had, make it a six-month extension approvable by town staff. Right. I think is reasonable mm -hmm. if it meets, you know, if it's a good cause. I think, right. we can, right. yeah. I think we can exercise judgment in, in deciding if it's good cause or not. Exactly. Um, it, I, I agree. I don't think that those are those extensions, but it does say in the ordinance by the by the uh, uh, by the person or board issuing the original permit, that's and that's why it comes back to you. So we may have to amend that language as well if that was your wish. <laughs> um, so I would entertain. Yeah, I mean, send me emails or Dan. Bacon, uh, send emails or... You, you want to do that as chairman of this meeting here? <laughs> <laughs> My tenure is over. <laughs> 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 thank you. Thank you, Mr. Longstaff, for I need, um, assistance this evening. Mr. Marcus, to correct this, his answer on this here. He did not go yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Please. You were a no. That's right. And 
I, I look forward to our chair and co-chair coming back <laughs> next month. Next month will be our annual December Christmas meeting. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't stumble through this Hopefully too much. Hopefully we'll all be here and exchange but gifts. What we, um, what we approved, I will have to have you sign Okay. Um, when I get the form, and I'll just send you an email. Yeah, sure. you'll actually have to do the, yeah, the official you. signatures okay. on the Okay. Do and I have to tell you my resignation at the end of the meeting, what, like we did, we elected me at the beginning of the meeting? Why don't you hold on to it? Maybe you have to do it next week. No, I think, I think that automatically expires when the okay. meeting is, is adjourned. All right, just making sure. <laughs> is there case, anyone else? Have in case our a chair or co-chair is watching this and having other thoughts about December. Sure. <laughs> Anybody else have any last comments? Motion to adjourn. I second the motion. I think we need a first. I need a first. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking for one. one. I'll forget. <laughs> uh, you weren't down there. First, I guess. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.